It's time for Bible reading. And this morning we'll be um, doing a brief teaching that we've heard probably 200, 300 times over and over and over. I remember a preacher who kept preaching John 3.16 in his church. And for one year, he kept preaching John 3.16. And they asked him, Pastor, don't you have another message? He said, when John 3.16 starts working, I'll go to John 3.17. I'll go to John 3.17. Amen. John 14, verse 13 to 14. There are things I need you to know that the earth responds to. The earth does not respond to your mood. The earth does not respond to how you feel. The earth does not respond to your anger. It doesn't respond to even your crying. It responds to your words. Did you hear me? The earth will answer to your words. 13. And whatsoever you shall ask or demand in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We have cases of Jabez calling on God and God answered him. We have cases of Hannah going to God to pray and God answered her. But when Jesus was to teach the God kind of faith, he taught it as you addressing objects, things, and circumstances, and they respond and answer to you. In Mark 11, the same Mark 11, from verse 12, on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And if we jump to verse 20, in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter, calling to remembrance, said to him, Master, the fig tree you cursed has withered. And he said to them, Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say, Now this is not to God, though they are using it as an analogy to teach you about God. But he's saying, Whosoever shall say, to this mountain. Now, substitute the mountain with two more. Asthma. Cancer. Deaths. Um, um, I don't know what you want to put there. Be thou removed, but you must say, not complain. You must say, not cry. You must say, not put head down like this. You must say, to what? The mountain. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. And Jesus, aligning with John 14, said, I will make sure that mountain moves. So here, God is encouraging us that as the crown of creation to set in order whatever may be lacking in our lives, with what? With our words. With our words. With what our words in Joshua 24, 27, Joshua said, can you see these stones on the floor? They said, yes. He said, they have heard the word of God that we spoke today. They've heard 
and they stand as witness. Meaning, the day comes and they have to align. They will speak and align. Jesus said the stones can cry out. They will cry out if they have to cry out. So these animate things respond to the word you speak. You know, there have been times I just took my checkbook. Nobody uses checkbook. No, then. So I opened my application, my account, and I said, Big Green! Big Green! Big Green! In 24 hours, it was green. Ah, hey, your love, my shan. Come on, so will I count? Oh, my God. Eh? It will not respond to that. It will that account will not respond to that. It does not respond to cries. It does not respond to emotions. It does not respond to depression. It responds to words. And you must learn to speak, irrespective of the mood you find yourself, whether pleasant or not. Learn to speak. Speak to things. Speak in James chapter 3 from verse 2. says the body is controlled by the tongue. God shows you a vision that your hand or your leg is healed. He expects you to speak to it every morning. Because it won't get well until you speak. He just told you and showed you what you must do. So what do you do? Keep speaking. To where? That aspect of your body that is not aligning with order. And as you speak, and you keep speaking, you keep speaking, you keep speaking, they begin to align. They will move. They will talk if they have to talk. <laughs> if that's the only way to walk, they will talk. You will hear them talk. They will talk. They hear the word. I want us to create a lifestyle of a first impression, silence, or speech. The speech is to address, and where you don't know what to address, of a silence. They come meet you and say, oh, guess what? Uh, last month just changed your car. And you don't know what to say. Ah, it's well. Mm, okay, so where are they? Oh, I told that useless driver not to put his friend down. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Develop a lifestyle of a false response of solution. Did you hear me? I'll get my car today. I'll get my car today. I'll get my car today. So what happened? <laughs> Did you hear me? We'll pray so that God will fill your mouth. He will fill your mouth. So I opened my mouth and the Lord filled it. It will fill your mouth so that you will know how to give a word, an answer, whether to the weary or to the disjointed in season. The right answer in season to every situation and to every circumstance. In Isaiah 50, it says the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word to a dislocated situation. Did you hear me? To a dislocated, when David wept, nothing happened. When he inquired, God spoke. So the weeping is okay for emotional um, release, but it will solve it. But you need the problem solved, right? So learn to talk. Learn to talk. Learn to talk. Did you hear me? Learn to talk. Learn to talk. And learn to talk well. And learn to talk right. Amen? So we'll pray Isaiah 50. <clears throat> that should be verse 4. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned so that you should know how to speak a word in season. To him, that word weary, replace it 
to any crisis situation. Once the Lord gives you the right utterances for it, even the valley of dry bones, when bones are very dry, that problem has lingered for long. It got solved at the command of the release of the prophetic word from God. Did you hear me? It got solved. It got sorted out. It got addressed. Its valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37, was solved by utterances. Amen? Amen. See after me, say, Heavenly Father, give me the tongue of the learned that every time that I open my mouth, it will be solution, solving crisis, faith moving mountains, and glorifying you in the name of Jesus. Give me the tongue of the learned that any time I open my mouth, you will be glorified in what I address in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Kozumba katande. Gredemo kozuva kataya mangede. Oroboko zege. Nangrudu za kataya mangoloboko zegede. Nangu chaka chaka. Nangu zuva katande ligizina. Gredemo zuba. Nengrede lo kozuro koteke. Nanga jaga jaga jolo. Nan grede keze, nan grede keze, nan grede keze, crudo suma, crudo lobo koze, crush kataya mongo zodo, e grede mo subra dedo, crudo mo koza kataya. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And I close with this testimony. I were driving on the road. It was bumpy, my goodness. And I had not passed that road for a long time, about 10 years. And someone who passed it say, Ah, so these useless uh, uh, politicians, all the money they should do, they've stolen it. This road has been bad for five years. When the election is coming, they will just put sand by the side and go away. They are here, people. I said, The first thing that came out of my eyes, I said, It will be fixed. You know, we've spoken at two extremes. I know sometimes when you speak like that, it affects the other person. They will feel bad. They say, yes, it will be fixed. That was on a Sunday after church. The next Sunday, it was tired. And it had not been tired for over 10 years. Was it coincidental? I don't know whether it was coincidental. But all I know, I said it will be fixed. And what I know is that all of them that will be passing, this but how all of them, they hear people. Useless. They chop all our money. See their tummy. Sorry, not all tummies chop money. They stolen our money. And I said, it will be fixed. It will be fixed. I think I said like three times, it will be fixed. I said, amen. And the next Sunday, it was not just stone. It was tad. I don't know who was with me. Who remember? You remember? Thank you. It was only carrier. It was tar the next one. You say, Ha! Ah, Pastor, the road is taxed. I said, And more will be fixed. And they will all be fixed. And will all be fixed. That's what I have. My mouth. And I'll use it well. Amen.